Hi, thank you for coming to my talk. My name is Peter Gartland, and today I will be presenting independent set on PKA free graphs in quasi polynomial time. Uh, this work was done jointly with Daniel Lokshtanov. If you're interested in seeing a full one hour talk, uh, I have a YouTube video titled Peter Gartland, independent set on PKA free graphs in quasi polynomial time, where you can watch it. Uh, and you can also see a direct link on your screen right now to that video. All right, so let me start off with a couple of definitions. Uh, first, we have uh, an independent set, also known as a stable set. Uh, it is a set S of vertices of G, so that no edge of G has both endpoints in S. So the input to our problem is a graph G, and what we want to do is we want to find a maximum size independent set in G. Uh, there's also a weighted version of this problem. Uh, the vertices now have weights on them, and our job is to find a maximum weight independent set. So independent set, uh, it's a classic problem. It's one of CARP's original 21 MP complete problems. Uh, it's hard to approximate. It doesn't have a sub exponential time algorithm, assuming ETH. It has no fully polynomial time algorithm. Uh, so given these hardness results, what we ask ourselves now is for which graph classes is independent set polynomial time solvable on? Uh, so to give ourselves a reasonable chance of answering this problem, we only want to ask this problem for nice graph classes. Right? And in particular, one type of nice uh, graph class is going to be hereditary graphs that are defined by a finite number of forbidden induced subgraphs. Independent set is known to remain hard on most H-free classes. Uh, this is the theorem due to Alexeyev. Uh, and what it says precisely is that let fancy H be a finite set of graphs so that every graph H in fancy H has at least one of the following properties. Uh, it has a vertex of degree at least four, or it has two vertices of degree greater than or equal to three in the same connected component or it has a cycle. Then independent set remains empty complete on fancy H-free graphs. Uh, so this is a very easy reduction, but we're going to skip it in the interest of time. Uh, so uh, those conditions are really quite general and it leaves us with some pretty restricted remaining cases. Um, in particular, the remaining cases is basically um, if H contains at least one graph H, such that every connected component of H is a path or a subdivision of the claw, right? That is our only remaining case where fancy H contains some graph that looks like this, a force of paths and subdivided claws. Right, so a natural question for us to ask is, well, what is the complexity of PK-free graphs or CLK-free graphs? Uh, of course, PK just means PK free, means that it has no uh, induced path of length K. Uh, and through this talk, we'll use CLK uh, to denote a claw that has had each of its uh, edges subdivided K minus one times. So uh, this graph over here is CL6. It's had each one of its initial three edges subdivided five times. Um, just a regular claw. Uh, would be denoted as CL1. Uh, so there are some known polynomial time results in this direction. Uh, in 1981, we had Corneal et al. Uh, giving a polynomial time algorithm for the independent set problem on P4 free graphs. Uh, and then in 2014, uh, Loshinov et al. gave a polynomial time algorithm that worked on P5 free graphs. And then Gretzek et al. in 2019 gave a polynomial time algorithm that worked on P6 free graphs. In between these results, we have Lokshinov et al. giving a quasi polynomial time algorithm for P6 free graphs in 2018. And Lokshinov et al. again doing this uh, for P5 free graphs in 2013. Um, for CL1 free graphs, um, that is to say, just regular claw free graphs. Um, we had Shibi and Minty uh, in 1980 giving a polynomial, polynomial time algorithm for independent set on 
these graphs. Uh, and then for four free graphs, which is the graph depicted here, we had LXA in 2004, giving a polynomial time algorithm for independent set problem. And uh, in 2008, this was extended by Lozen and Milanik to work for the weighted version of the independent set. Uh, here are some known results beyond polynomial time algorithms. So we had in 2019, Boxo et al. gave a sub-exponential time algorithm that worked on PK-free graphs for all K. And then in 2019, we had Chernovsky et al. giving a quasi-polynomial time approximation scheme on all remaining classes. Uh, that is H-free graphs, where H is a forest of paths and subdivided clause. Uh, so all of these results are still consistent um, with independent set remaining MP-complete on P7 free graphs and CL2 free graphs. So what our result shows is that for every K, independent set on PK free graphs has an algorithm with runtime n to the big O of K squared times the third power of log of n. And this algorithm also works for the weighted independent set problem, and it also works for counting independent sets. Uh, and this is really the first conclusive evidence uh, that independent set is not NP-complete on PK free graphs, of course, assuming that NP is not contained in quasi-polynomial time. And yeah, OK, so this algorithm is not polynomial time, which is, of course, what we would have loved to have. Uh, but this result is much more general than any polynomial time result that has come before it. Uh, you'll also see that this algorithm is really quite simple. Um, there aren't any uh, technical details that I'm going to have to sweep under the rug to give this talk. Uh, so we have the following conjecture. Uh, if H is a force of paths and subdivided clause, then independent set on H graphs is MP. Uh, so what we conjecture really is that all cases whose MP completeness uh, doesn't follow from LX saves reduction uh, have a polynomial uh, time algorithm. Uh, so this result was proved in the same paper that I'm uh, talking about right now. Uh, and what it says is that to prove uh, the conjecture up to quasi-polynomial runtime, it suffices to prove that independent set on CLK free graphs is in QP for all K. Uh, so we won't discuss the details of this theorem in this talk. Uh, so what is our algorithm in a nutshell? Uh, we take a graph G and an integer N, and what this integer is will be made clear in a moment. And we return the size of a maximum independent set of G. So if G has uh, one or zero vertices, then we just return the size of G. If all components of G have size less than n divided by two, then we recurse on connected components and return the sum of this answer. All right, so uh, what is n? n is just going to be an integer that's usually approximately the size of G. And we just really use n to keep track of uh, how much progress we've made since we've last recursed on connected components. Right, so you can see that when we recurse on connected components, we set n just to be the size of the connected component. Um, right, and then once the size of g drops below n divided by 2, then we know it's time for us to recurse on connected components. And if none of these two cases hold, then we're going to cleverly pick some vertex v, and we're going to branch on v. Right, so that is we're going to make one guess where we guess that V uh, is not in a maximum independent set that we're seeking. And then we make another guess where we guess that V is in a maximum independent set that we're seeking. All right, and then we return the max of these solutions. Um, so when we look at the recursion tree, um, this is clearly a recursive algorithm. When we look at the recursion tree of our algorithm, we're going to have some nodes marked with T, and that's going to denote nodes where we reach this base case, right? These are going to be terminal uh, nodes, terminal vertices. We've reached this base case where G only has one vertex, and we just return the size of G, one or zero vertices. 
Um, the next kind of vertex we can have is going to be uh, labeled with the C to mean that this is going to be a call where we recursed unconnected components. All right. And lastly, we're going to have some nodes marked with a B in our recursion tree, and those are going to do those are going to denote nodes um, where in this call we branch on a vertex. All right. So B for branching. Well, so what is the runtime of this algorithm? Uh, so our goal is to quickly arrive at a case where we're either in a C node, meaning that we are recursing on connected components, or we're in a T node, meaning that we've reached a terminal vertex. Okay, so, so our goal really um, is that if we look at any subtree of our recursion tree, such that all of the internal vertices are branch nodes, branch vertices, um, then what we want to say is that the number of leaves of such a uh, subtree is small. It's quasi-polynomial. In particular, we want to say that the number of leaves is going to be at most n to the big O of k squared times log of n squared. Uh, and if we're able to achieve this goal here, right, this is our main goal. If we're able to achieve this goal, then we get a runtime of n to the big O of k squared uh, to the third power of log n. All right, so we have a balanced separator lemma. And what this lemma says is that if G is a PK-free graph, then there exists a set X of vertices such that the following three properties hold. Uh, the first is that the closed neighborhood of X is a number of vertices of G divided by four balanced separator. Next is that the size of X is small, meaning that it is less than 5K, less than or equal to. Um, and that X can also be found in polynomial time. Uh, so this is, a, this is a very simple lemma. Um, Boxo et al. in 2019 uh, proved this lemma for the number of vertices of G divided by two balance separator uh, using the Geoffroy's path growing argument. And our lemma is just a simple extension of this lemma, which itself is um, fairly simple also. Okay, so we have this original goal of bounding the number of leaves of a uh, subtree of our recursion tree um, such that all the internal vertices are branch vertices. All right, so how do we achieve this goal? Well, we're going to collect n over four bound separators using uh, that previous lemma that I just showed. And we're going to branch on vertices with many neighbors containing at least a few collected bound separators or some neighbors contained in many of the collective balance separators, uh, or anything that kind of interpolates between these two points. All right, so when we branch in this manner, we are going to efficiently break up our graph into small connected components. Okay, so we need to collect these balance separators, right? Uh, so one of the inputs to our algorithm, actually, so we have G, right? We have our graph G, we have our integer N, our algorithm is also going to take a set F, right? And in fact, it's actually going to be a multi-set, right? So F is going to be a set of vertex sets. Each set in F is going to be an N over four balanced separator. And the same set can occur multiple times, right? So F is going to be a multi-set. The initial call to our algorithm is going to be with our graph G. Um, N is going to be set to the number of vertices of G and F is going to be set to the empty set. All right, so how does the actual algorithm work? Um, so again, we have, as input, we have a graph G, an integer N, and a, with this vertex multifamily F. And we're going to return the size of a maximum independent set of G. All right, so if G has one or zero vertices, then we just simply return the size of G. That's our base case. Again, if all components of G have size less than n over two, then we recurse on connected components and we return their sum. All right, and then notice that when we recurse on connected components, we reset the value of F, right? So we set F to equal the empty set again. Next, if, the, if there exists a branchable vertex V, 
Um, then we branch on V, right? And what it means for Vertex to be branchable, we will define in, uh, in a little bit. And lastly, um, if there's no Vertex V to branch on, right, then we find a new balanced separator S and we just add it to F and then we recurse. All right, so this is going to add uh, a new type of node to our recursion tree, right? It's going to be these S nodes, uh, S standing for a separator, right? These are going to be instances where we add a balanced separator. Okay, so let's remind ourselves what is our goal. Um, I just introduced a new kind of uh, node in our recursion tree. So what does our updated goal look like now? Um, well, still the same goal, really. We want to quickly arrive at a case where we are either recursing on connected components, um, or we've reached uh, one of these terminal calls, right? Where our graph has just one or zero vertices. Um, and then, so what is our goal now saying really is that, so if we look at any subtree of our recursion tree, such that all internal vertices are branch vertices, or they are adding a separator vertex, right? So they're B vertices or S vertices, um, then we still want to have this bound, right? We still want to have that the number of leaves of such a subtree is at most n raised to the big O of k squared times log of n squared. All right, this is what our goal is. All right, so I need to explain to you what it means for vertex free branchable, right? And to do that, I need to define uh, level sets. So the ith level set with respect to f. It consists of all vertices contained in at least i sets of f. Right again, f is this vertex multifamily. Uh, so, for example, if f equals uh, the set which contains the vertex set a and b, the vertex set a, c, and d, and the vertex set a and b again, then level one contains the vertices a, b, c, and d. These are all vertices that appear in at least one of the sets of f. Level two contains all vertices that appear in at least two of the sets of F, and that would be the vertices A and B. And then level three will contain the vertices that appear in at least three of the sets of F, and that's just going to be the vertex A. All right, so note that level one contains level two, which contains level three, and so on. All right, so now I can give you the definition of what is a branchable vertex. A vertex V is branchable if there exists a level set I such that V has at least N divided by two to the I neighbors in level I, uh, counting V itself as a neighbor, right? So we're taking the closed neighborhood of V. All right, so that's what it means for vertex to be branchable. Uh, so note that means that all vertices in level set log N are branchable. Uh, that implies that no vertex belongs to over log n balanced separators of f. Because right, they're going to branch on such a vertex right away. All right, so this is our main lemma. This is really the driving force behind why our algorithm is efficient. Uh, so what this lemma says is that any C free path in the recursion tree contains at most 2k times log n nodes of type S. All right, so we're going to be adding at most 2k times log n balanced separators um, in between instances where we recurse on connected components. Well, so why is that? A very brief explanation as to why it is, is well, suppose not. Uh, then we have a lot of n over four balanced separators for which no vertex belongs to over log n of them. A simple probabilistic argument shows that the average distance between pairs of vertices in G then is at least k. Right, but G is a PK free graph, and that's our contradiction. Okay, so next we have an upper bound on the size of the level sets. Uh, in particular, we have the following lemma that says in a C free path in the recursion tree, for every I at most 10K squared times log of N times N divided by two to the I vertices are ever added to level I plus one. And a brief explanation for why that is, is, um, well, recall how we generate a balanced separator S, right? S is the neighborhood of a vertex set X, 
um, where X is small, right? X is at most 5K vertices. Um, and furthermore, if we are adding a balanced separator, that means that there are no branchable vertices, which means that every vertex in X doesn't have very many neighbors into level set I, right? So when we add X to F, we only ever add at most 5k times n divided by 2 to the i vertices to level set i plus 1. Right? And then furthermore, from what the previous lemma said, that only 2k times log of n sets are ever added to f altogether. And that is uh, where we get our bound from. OK, so the previous lemma shows that uh, our branching strategy lets us reach our goal. And let's recall what our goal is again. Uh, our goal states uh, that if we look at any subtree of our recursion tree, where all the internal vertices are branch nodes, right? They're B nodes, or they are adding a balanced separator node, they're S nodes, um, then the number of leaves of this subtree is at most n to the big O of k squared times log of n squared. All right, this is what our goal is. Uh, so why is the previous lemma uh, show that we're going to reach this goal? Uh, well, what the previous lemma says is that for all i, level i accumulates no more than 10k squared log n times n divided by 2 to the i vertices. Right? So recall what it means for vertex to be branchable. A vertex v is going to be branchable if there exists some uh, level i, right, such that v has at least n divided by 2 to the i neighbors in level set i. Right, so each time we branch on a vertex V, we remove at least n divided by 2 to the i vertices for some level set uh, when we guess that V is in the solution. Uh, and that means that we're going to efficiently deplete all level sets. Right, and what happens when level set 1 is totally depleted? Well, that means that we've gotten rid of all of the vertices in some balanced separator of our graph. This implies that our graph is broken up into small connected components, and then we will reach a uh, C node in our recursion tree, right? We are going to recurse on connected components here. And that's it. Thank you for coming to my talk.